Hi, my name is Ty, and this is The Bitter Bartender. I spent a lot of time behind the bar and even more time in front. Today, we're going to be talking about Opier Gin. This is an Oriental style London dry. What do they mean by Oriental? Well, the Oriental actually is a reference to the spices that they use to infuse the gin. Uh, it's actually my favorite London dry on the market right now. Uh, for a long time, I drank Tanqueray 10. Uh, if I was going to go for a London dry style gin, it was good. I, I mean, it was my favorite for years. Uh, and then somebody pointed me this direction. I have not looked back. This is a fantastic gin. Uh, this is very, I mean, it, it's gin. So it has that piney nose to it with the juniper. When you taste it, those spices really actually are more prevalent. I want to say it actually advertises more the fact that it has coriander in it, but what really comes out is the cardamom. Uh, the black pepper, absolutely. Uh, but the, the cardamom really, that spice really gets you in your face in a good way. It's a good cocktail. The second spirit that we're going to be talking about today is Dolan. Dolan Dry Vermouth. This is actually my favorite dry vermouth right now. Yes, Martini Rossi is going to be the namesake of all dry vermouth in pretty much any bar you walk into that has dry vermouth. And that's fine. It's not bad. It's not great. The problem is it's probably been there two years open. This is a fortified wine. Okay, so when you open this, you have to seal it and refrigerate it, and it still won't last any longer than, I don't know, four to six weeks if you seal it right. That Martini and Rossi has been opened up, left out on the shelf, room temp, not sealed, as in there's oxygen mixing with it, and it's been there for two years. Of course you don't like martinis because they're pouring really terrible vermouth that's gone bad into it. Speaking of martinis, that's actually what we're making today. I'm excited because I really love martinis. They're one of my favorite cocktails in the world. Uh, mostly because, one, I love gin. And two, it's actually really interesting to see other people's renditions of them. What I mean by that, what I'm doing is I'm chilling the glass, by the way. What I mean by that is Winston Churchill was a famous drinker. <laughs> uh, there was a time where he was asked uh, what he was going to do about the pilots being lost during World War II in Africa. If a plane went down in Europe, they will know where it went. It goes down in Africa, it's gone. So they're asking him what he planned to do about it. And Winston Churchill, being snarky, said that he was going to give every one of his pilots a survival kit, which would consist of gin, vermouth, and a shaker. And everyone in the room laughed. And they asked, well, how is that going to help them? And he said, as soon as they start making a martini, somebody will come around telling them that they're doing it wrong. And that's really what it comes down to when it comes to martinis. There's half a million ways to make it. It's all personal preference. There's really two spirits. Oh, that's actually delicious. It's smooth and velvety. With a... Um, A slight fruitiness to it. The problem you'll have with most people making a martini is that since around the 90s, I would say, martinis no longer have gin in them. They're vodka with chocolate, or a key lime pie, or blueberry marmalade, or whatever. Those are tasty, absolutely, and they use vodka 
But that's not what a traditional martini would be. A traditional martini is gin and dry vermouth. Now, if you want to get super technical about it, it drink was really introduced in the 1860s in, uh, near San Francisco, and it was called the Martinez. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. How I like to make my martini is a two to one ratio of gin to vermouth. Now, a lot of people will say, well, that's way too high. You should just put a little bit of vermouth in the shaker and swirl it around, pour it out. Or even do what Winston Churchill did, which is he would take a shaker, fill a gin, and point it in the direction of Italy, and then put the ice and do whatever. I'm sorry, the whole point of the drink is a culmination of two different flavors mingling and creating a delicious cocktail. I think a lot of the reason why dry vermouth has fallen out of favor is because just terrible storage. How most bars keep their vermouth is disgusting. And quite frankly, most people, their idea of a martini is iced vodka. Maybe some olives. Or maybe just vodka with olive juice. That's, that would be it. That's a lot of people's modern understanding of what a martini is. That's not what I like about a martini because I actually like vermouth. I like gin. I like them when they are together. I like the way they taste when they're together. So, what we're going to do is we're actually going to make two today. And, well, reason why is because a lot of people associate martinis with dirty martinis. So with olives and olive juice. I like to use a lemon peel. It's also a traditional manner of doing it. Uh, you can even put cocktail onions in it and it actually changes the name of the whole drink to a Gibson. Uh, but there's so many fun things about martinis. There's a lot of interesting stories. It is the king of cocktails. Every cocktail that is in modern culture, when you say cocktail, synonymously, you think this glass, regardless of what you're putting into it. But traditionally, this was made for a martini. And that glass is synonymous with cocktails. This is, if not the flagship of cocktails, it's damn well in the lead. So, without further, let's get started. Okay, so, let's make that martini. So what I do is I use two ounces of the gin. And then one ounce of dry vermouth. There's a couple different kinds of vermouth you can get out there. This just happens to be my favorite. And make sure that when you're, well, storing it, chilled and sealed. There's a couple different things you can do. I have these rubber stoppers with a vacuum pump. It sucks out all the air. Uh, there's a, uh, a little harder with these screw top styles, but if you have something that comes with like a cork stop there's these aerosol cans that you can put in spray and it eats up all the oxygen close it up it's like you never open the thing those are really cool there's a couple different ways to do it just make sure it gets done so plenty of ice so it doesn't dilute too fast and just give this a good stir as I said previously, always stir your gin. Always. Or I will find you. I will find where you live. And I will make sure that you get sent really an inconvenient amount of mail. I'll passive aggressive terrorize you. I'm kidding. I'm not going to do any of that. <laughs> but I will 
shake my finger at you with disdain. Oh, man. But, I mean, it's, it's gin. You should be stirring it regardless. It's a subtle flavor. The aeration type kills a, the really subtle flavors in the gin. Just stir it. Just do it. Just do it. Uh, okay, so. That's good. So we're gonna do. Just gonna take this glass. See it out. We're gonna strain. Get a good healthy swath of lemon peel, trying to avoid the pith. The pith is the white part underneath. You'll get a little bit, but not the biggest deal in the world. And what you want to do is you want to actually squeeze it over your cocktail to express the oils out of your peel. Rub it around the rim. And if you want to be super fancy, you can do things like cut this thing up, you can twist it, just grab a bar spoon, and just kind of wrap it around and tighten it, further expressing the oils. I didn't do a very good job, <laughs> but this, I'm in the drink. And that is a martini with a twist of lemon. Very citrus nose. That's my comfort spot. <laughs> so, the, the gin is ever present, of course. Uh, but the vermouth really tones down that kind of uh, the, the alcohol, ethanol, kind of back of your throat kind of burn. And it just chills it down. Fantastic drink. You definitely want to have this pretty cold. So it's going to allow it to be refreshing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a fantastic summery cocktail. You don't have too many of those. Because those will knock you out. <laughs> you will pass out from this. This, this will get you... A, fast so like have one or two <laughs> anyways let's get started with number two let's get started with that dirty martini now this is going to be the more famous of the of the two i'm making thanks in part to i mean james bond ian fleming the author of james bond uh lots of pop culture blowing up from that in recent years, actually not even recent years, I think it probably after like the third movie he started using vodka. Uh, originally, I believe the way they had it was they made a Vesper martini, which is gin and vodka, and Lille Kine, I believe, which is a, it's like vermouth, but it's from a specific region in Italy and hasn't existed in like 80 years. Uh, but. Not 80 years, that's an exaggeration. But it hasn't existed in a long time, so getting that original kind of flavor, you're not really going to get it. You'll probably get something close, but not exactly the same thing. So, if you do want to watch me make a Vesper Martini, let me know. And I'll try to find the closest thing to that as I can. There we go. Two ounces of the gin, one ounce of the dry vermouth, and a dirty martini has olive juice brine in it. So we're gonna actually just go for a little bit, probably about quarter ounce. 
And then when you garnish, it's tradition that you use an odd amount of olives on your skewer. I believe Dean Martin uh, was famous for saying it should always be three olives because it's kind of your lunch. <laughs> How many martinis you're drinking for those olives to be your lunch uh, is highly questionable, but I'm not going to judge one of the greats. So you do you, Dean Martin. <laughs> All right, so we're going to put some ice in here. give this a good stir, not a shake. So this is, this is really is one of my favorite cocktails. Uh, it's simple, it's elegant, and unfortunately it's extremely easy to ask for and it not be at all what you thought it was going to be. Uh, I remember going out and asking somebody for a martini um, and they shook it. And I do remember specifically asking for a gin martini, and I guess that's just how that person just got asked all the time. I stopped him, I said, dude, I did not want that shaken at all. I do understand that there's a lot of people who think, James Bond, uh, yeah, shaken martini. Yeah, man, at that point, it's just really, really, really cold vodka. Not really a martini. So... Here is a dirty martini. That's a classic. <laughs> that is what everyone thinks when you say cocktail. That's what comes up. Let's give this a taste. Oily. Not in a bad way. So it has more of a... It's salty. Which I've actually seen quite a few people actually put like a salt saline in their martinis when they're not using an actual like olive brine. Which is fine. Uh, it adds a different complexity to your drink. But if you're adding olive brine, it is completely unnecessary. Do not add salt saline to your to your martini. Uh, could this have used it? Maybe. I thought may have, perhaps it would kind of interfere with the lemonade aspect of it. It already has oil. Why add more salt? But say la vie. And anyways, that's my show. I'm going to keep drinking this. <laughs> and uh, as always... Thank you for watching my show. Let's get drunk.